was a uh... <laughs> well I have anemia I want to give vlogging a go as well <laughs> anemia vlog I don't know yeah I'm gonna try <laughs> vlogging very lazy vlogging though because I don't have an interest in life Let's just like, I have anemia. <laughs> okay, get off my back. I'm anemic. I'm struggling today. My anemia is playing up. The thing with having anemia is, right, okay, like I know lots of people have anemia. That's a thing that's pretty common. The weird thing for me is that I am a carrier of two different separate genes for a disease called hemochromatosis which is like a blood disorder people who are like afab or whatever can't have the full disease um it's like an x activated or whatever biology stuff only men can get it every time in the past when i've had my iron levels tested they've been on the higher side and last year when I had my iron levels tested they were on the too much iron side I had too much iron in my blood and my doctor recommended I just try to be careful with my iron intake um, don't take iron supplements and just be generally careful with like vitamin c as well because vitamin c is like the vitamin that helps you process iron just be careful about iron was basically the advice I was given and so I've been living my life being careful about iron um, and being careful about my vitamin C and all that fun stuff. So I have avoided just iron things and now I'm anemic. So that's interesting. I love having um, a fun body that's full of surprises. That's me today. That's where I'm at right now. Drinking my coffee because Although it doesn't provide me with the essential iron in my blood, it does provide me with the essential dopamine to keep chugging along today. I, I don't know if you can tell, but I am like super out of breath. Apparently that's an anemic thing. So I was in the hospital two weeks ago because I was having what would be considered um, heart problems and that's all could have been anemia and I probably could have known sooner that it was anemia if they um, did blood tests at the hospital but they didn't because we are in a pandemic and hospitals are overcrowded and they just want to make sure you're not dying so they can send you home so that's where I'm at right now but um, join me on my <laughs> journey to cure my anemia I guess I guess I'll be keeping that update going and whatever else happens in my life I guess I'm on my phone I only have one battery for my camera and I don't know if it's charged so I'm just on my phone playing a show tonight not playing a show my friend's band is playing a show and he had his tonsils removed so he can't really sing and stuff so I'm like doing a song for the show and it's been a while since I have performed live and I'm like super, super anxious about it. I think there's like a video online somewhere of my old band performing. I was the vocalist. That band ended because I was chronically ill and I couldn't um, couldn't do it anymore. It was too physically exhausting. Like screaming takes a lot out of you. I don't know about regular singing, but screaming it takes a lot. Like even I went to a band practice to practice the song that I'm doing tonight the other day. And I have felt so shit, <laughs> like, since. Like, just tired and... I'm... 
more nervous than excited at this point because uh, I'm a perfectionist and if I can't do everything perfect the way I envision it um, I just hate myself a little bit for it no like I I just I'm, I'm my own worst critic I guess and I, I get really anxious about <laughs> like it'll sound bad and I don't know I won't do a good job if you can hear that noise in the background that's my cat being a jerk I love the idea of being in a heavy band again but like it's just too exhausting and I don't see myself recovering from chronic illness at any point soon so we'll see I'm gonna try and get some someone to record uh, the performance so if it's not a total disaster I might include a clip That's, that's pretty much what uh, my weekend is at the moment, apart from catching up on assignments uh, that I've had to get extensions on from the fact that I've been really sick. Um, anemia update. I still have anemia. Time to get ready with me. Uh, getting ready for the show. Just brushing my teeth, obviously. So, uh, yeah, just checking my hair um this is cat stevens he's my middle child um yeah look at him he just has to be where the action is i think um but bye cat so first i usually wash my face with like a mucilin cloth um just with like warm water um, and I just, you know, do that to remove the dead skin cells. Uh, moisturizer. I use uh, Kiehl's Ultra Hydrating thing and like also the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid thing. And I mix them together sometimes. Um, I warm them up between my fingers to make them like my body temperature. Um, and I just, yeah. I um, do it in like the gua sha method, whatever it is, you know, like upward motions on the face to not like pull the skin down i don't know if it actually does anything but it makes me feel like i know something about skin um so yeah i just kind of focus on like gently gliding the cream across my face and upward strokes um yeah so that's that um, I'm chewing gum the entire time, you can just uh, keep that to yourself. So I use um, a hair curly spray thing by Way. it's basically the same as sea salt spray, just slightly fragranced. Fragranced? Fragranced. The thing with like Way stuff is it's super fragranced. Um, and I just kind of tease that for longer than you see here like i teased it for <laughs> quite a while um mainly just i it just keeps the hair texture my hair is very um fine and light and so it gets heavy and weighed down very easily um so like the sea salt spray kind of dries it out a bit um and gives my hair a bit of texture and just kind of honestly it just holds um the curl without letting it get weighed down too much um, apparently my hairdresser said i need less moisture in my hair so i'm i'm working on it but yeah and then i just kind of tease my hair for a little bit um till it looks good essentially um yep that's me done with the hair next uh beauty blenders i bought this one i hate it i like this little one that i got from chemist warehouse um you know soak it up water squeeze out excess etc um i use a milk cosmetics uh i grabbed my makeup bag and i didn't even look at the name of it it's like a um skin tint i 
fucking hate the applicator. It is the worst applicator I've ever used. The ball constantly clogs and I have to like fiddle with it constantly. The product itself, I really like, but the applicator is a freaking nightmare to work with. Um, I just kind of roll it across my face. Skincare people do not come at me about my application methods. I am doing my best, but yeah, like I just kind of roll it on it's a skin tint it's not it's like quite light coverage um and you're not gonna see me apply it because i do it in the bathroom mirror but here is after what do you think does it look good i just it even evens out my skin tone i have rosacea so i think my cat scared me just then <laughs> um so yeah the, this is just me applying with my tiny beauty blender it's really firm i don't know i think i just like firmer beauty blenders than like the more spongy ones um and then my camera fell over so that was i have it leaning up against the window and it's like an old house and the windows kind of shutter sometimes and you will see that a little bit here when i put it back up and the window shutters again and i'm like are you good hello but anyways so then back to that this is how i look when it's all blended in you yeah, know it's quite decent coverage um and then i do my eyebrows i have a nyx uh, what is it called thicket stick it i actually um don't like this product a whole lot i used to use a nyx um like eyebrow mascara just called tinted eyebrow mascara and that stuff is so good but i can't seem to find it anywhere anymore so i use the new nyx one which like the hold is really good it's just the color payoff is just not great i don't like using um like i don't like filling in my brows because they're already quite thick i just need to kind of control where they go so anyways that's after i think the color i got is slightly too neutral but whatever what are we doing next uh yes so bronzer um funny story about this bronzer it's um it's by this australian brand called fluff um it's like very low pigment um mineral natural stuff i like um bronzer that's on the lower pigment side because i don't want it to be too harsh um anyways found out in the pandemic that uh, the owner of this brand is an anti-vaxxer and an anti-masker so um, this when this product runs out I won't be repurchasing it because I won't be supporting that it's also really expensive so if you know um, any other um, bronzers slash just uh, you know color to give my skin depth without going too hard um any good brands to dupe it out with i would love to know um and yeah i just do it under my cheekbones under my chin the tiniest bit um just to give definition again i don't like harsh makeup so that's that um i also like on my nose i squeeze the brush because i actually just don't have a smaller brush so i just do it like this um for that like sun-kissed look i know a lot of people don't like the look but I personally really like it so eat my oh uh, shit I guess um no so I just um put it like in the center of the bridge of my nose not on the tip and I put it like kind of where my eye creases are because that's how an actual sun kiss look actually looks when you're burnt um and then I go in with concealer uh, do not at me for going in with concealer after I put a powder product on whatever I don't know what I'm doing um, I just put the tiniest bit on my hand it's um makeup revolution full cover concealer so um, it really is full cover so I use like the tiniest bit and I just put that on like the tip of my nose and um, in the like middle of my eyebrows and just to cover up any spots and then I have um, hot mama by the balm just as blush I don't really know that much about blush so I just bought what was cheap I'm using a Morphe 46 20 69 420 I don't know um, I put that like under on my nostrils kind of um, like it looks like I've blown my nose a bit too much and then I kind of deepen that sun-kissed kind of vibe um, I actually kind of hate that Morphe brush so 
um, this is me just having a look and then I come in with my other brush that's like softer and better at blending out powders um, to just make it look more natural because that Morphe brush is not very good um, so that's that and then I just uh, what else I can't decide if I want to wear eyeliner or not I've gotten really into like the fox eye look lately um, I think I'm just gonna like go like a tiny little tiny little wing in the corner um, it just makes my eyes look a bit like longer um, I'm using this uh, what is like some Japanese or Korean brand that someone told me um, heroin make I got it off of Amazon I do that in the mirror you're not gonna see how that's done but uh, yeah I just do like the tiniest little thing it's more to just make my eyes look a certain way rather than um, making them look eyeliner -y. Um For mascara, I do not give a fuck about mascara. I just use this like W7 one that my mum bought me huge amounts of when she worked at a chemist. Um, so I just do that at like, um, like right at the end of my upper eyelashes to kind of blend into that uh, eyeliner and also my bottom lashes to just make my eyes look bigger. And yeah, I'm gonna have some water, and that's pretty much um, the end of it. If these glitches come out at the end of editing, um, they're just fun little jump scares, but thanks, bye. So the show went really well last night. I didn't stuff up and forget the lyrics. Maybe like a tiny bit, but it's fine. Yeah, it went pretty good. Um, and after the show, my bands that no longer is but is kind of i don't know we've tried to reform several times and it's just never come to fruition but uh yeah my, the drummer of my uh old band was like let's let's do something again let's get another band going or let's get the let's get the band back together whatever but um we'll see because <laughs> to be like perfectly honest i feel today like I, I felt okay this morning um and then like as the day has progressed I've just starting to feel more and more kind of exhausted and drained and mm, all that fun stuff you can probably tell how tired I sound and <sighs> it's rough I hate this I hate being like I hate just never having any energy. It sucks. Like, <sighs> maybe when my anemia is cured. <laughs> I feel so tired and I have a soil report that is overdue. I don't think I'm getting it done today. Let's just say that much. I'm so. I have no brain power left. Like I think uh, all day I've just been like contemplating going back to bed. Uh, so that's that. Gideon, what are you doing? Just rubbing your face. And Cat Stevens is in there. He really tries to avoid me when I let them outside because he's untrustworthy. Gideon, on the other hand, is incredibly trustworthy. I would rely on him uh, if he was a human. I reckon he'd give me one of his kidneys. That's how much I think he loves me. Cat Stevens, on the other hand, I don't know. He'd probably be one of those people who'd say they'd give you their kidney. And then when the surgery time comes, they'd bail. That's what I think Cat Stevens would do. So, he's up or something. It's really windy. I'm sorry if the sound is terrible, but... I watch YouTubers that have like hundreds of thousands of uh, subscribers who their vlogs kind of sound terrible so um get off my back i am a freaking nobody and my sound 
is allowed to be terrible. I'm a nobody. I have zero money to, I mean, like I have a good mic, but it's not for the iPhone. So, so um, if you notice that my lips are a bit swollen, uh, no, you don't. Just don't even, don't even look at me right now. Nothing um, too interesting. I have to go to uni today. Uh, I am behind on all of my coursework, but it's because I've been really sick. So, luckily, my coordinators have been very, very, very generous with me, and it's honestly so nice. Like, I first year uni, um, especially like chemistry department, or even just like because I'm on a specialized campus, so it's smaller than the. Um, the university it's part of um, so classes are smaller uh, the lecturers and the course coordinators have more of a personal relationship with the students which is fantastic honestly my degree coordinator was a reference for my job that I have like and she was happy to do it so that's just that sort of stuff when I did my first year courses they were all at the main campus of that university which is like huge like 300 people enrolled into one course and there was usually like 30 or 40 people in the individual classes so um course coordinators were like kind of didn't view you as a person you were just a number to them i guess or just a grade to give whereas on a smaller campus uh you are a person to them and they do care about you and they do want you to do well because smaller campuses need good grades to get good funding so like you know they actually give a fuck and <laughs> maybe it's for their own benefit and maybe it's for mine i don't really care as long as i don't fail my courses so that's my plans for today is to go into uni and chat with my course coordinator i've had like really really bad migraines for the past few weeks that just kind of randomly occur could be the anemia could be something else we're not really sure yet but um a lot of data i have i've been i've had to do some data analysis i haven't been able to do it um because computer screens are not great for migraines obviously so um my course coordinator is going to go over the data with me so hopefully that i won't have to strain my brain too much on plugging it in myself nothing really too interesting this week to be honest i've got work for the next two days after today uh very not interesting stuff um I, i'm getting trained in like several areas at once um so work is pretty full-on right now um not full-on but just there's a lot of information I, I need to remember this week and right now what is massive is like five hour <laughs> breakdowns analysis stuff like the Quinton reviews um, kind of stuff where it goes uh, like Sarah Z and like uh, you know Jenny Nicholson like all the creators that do like one hour plus breakdowns of things like that's really popular there was like that nine hour <laughs> Wendigoon video that I've watched twice because <laughs> um, I like that stuff too it's great to have on um, just on, during the day while you're doing stuff uh, and then on the flip side of that 10 minutes or less videos are also uh, the the go right now i like i really like just for me <laughs> as far as like how i feel putting stuff out like i like to make my videos like in the 20 minute kind of range but that's not what people want it's very kind of like trying to figure out what people what the algorithm wants is so like i don't i just don't care anymore i just like this is what this whole like comeback to youtube is kind of me learning not to care that much and just try things and do things that like I don't have a thing 
and so I can try things and try different things and I've always wanted to try vlogging and I've always thought like it's not gonna be like very um well received because I don't have a very I don't have a very interesting life but like I've kind of gotten into lazy vlogs from other creators like like Kelsey Kreppel, her vlogs are very like chill, calm, like Joanna Spicer, um, they're mainly who I watch for vlogs, Hayley Blay, um, and there's a very like laid back, chill, just random uh, instances from their life and that's what I like, it's very calming, it's very grounding. Um, sometimes you don't want to watch a vlog of like a millionaire who hired like a private jet and is going to the Bahamas to swim with sharks. Like, who does that, you know? But everybody is lazy sometimes. Or like, most people that watch YouTube videos aren't rich and aren't doing extravagant things. They're just regular common folk like me. So, you know, I want it to be like a kind of grounded vibe. But I think I'm honestly just talking for the sake of talking at this point i'm gonna head off to uni now i'll see you later i just got out the shower so uh, i just had a really <laughs> just had a really shit day honestly not sh i think shit is a bit of a, a bit um exaggerated but Exhausting, I guess, is the more correct word term. I'm really... My brain um, not working. Yeah, just... An... It wasn't... <laughs> I'm so, like... Uh, dude, I don't know. Just, I, I had a... Um, Three hour workshop. I uh, wasn't aware that the lecture in the morning was going to like ha have a lot to do with the workshop. And obviously, I didn't watch the lecture this morning because I normally save the lectures for my weekends, study on the weekends because I have a job, etc. I also had an appointment this morning. Um, <clears throat> and so I went into the workshop because I was, I needed to speak to my course coordinator, um, and he wasn't even there, well he was there and then he bailed, and then, so I did the workshop, and I have group that I've had all semester, and I don't know, like, I know that, like, you're meant to um, fraternize and meet people and learn how to um, work together and uh, like all that stuff at uni. Like that's you're gonna come across all different types of people, right? And that I I fully understand that. But the thing is, I'm not an 18 year old fresh out of high school who hasn't interacted with the world much. I am a full grown adult, age redacted, but I've been on earth and out of high school for a very long time. And I have had that experience of being in the workforce and have been at university um, previously, like I studied graphic design for a few years. So I've done the whole socializing thing that university wants you to do and like when I originally so when I graduated high school I did a um, certificate in uh, media arts and um, because I didn't um, have university accreditations so that's what I did decided to do instead and that was just like a skill building thing really um, it wasn't like like you can't really get anything with a certificate of media arts except if you wanted to 
enroll in like a bachelor's degree in the same arts thing like it's basically like doing the first year of a bachelor of arts um visual arts not important but i've i've been on earth for a hot minute and i have done the socializing and interacting and working with others who are different to me and have different ways of being and all that kind of stuff so like being an older student at university is kind of like a different experience because I don't really like I know at my age what kind of people I get along with and what kind of people I don't get along with and what kind of people like I just don't have the same uh like values as or whatever like so it's just like when I'm in and like add on top being my cat just decided to start playing with a loud toy I don't even remember what I was just saying I am autistic and I already have a really hard time meeting people and, and getting to know people and so I've like figured out at this point in my life what kind of people I am good around and what kind of people I am comfortable with and I can like you know put on a performance when I'm in the work environment and all that but like ugh having to do it at university as well it's just like it's a bit much um anyways this is making it sound like way more dramatic than what it, what it actually is but sometimes i just don't have the mental energy oh my god Milhouse, shut up some days i just and today or whatever i have been really unwell and like I have anemia and I'm it's still going <laughs> and like I'm just really like drained like I have not been sleeping well I've not been eating well um, I've not been hydrating well because I've been feeling so sick and I have an iron deficiency and I have like this long thing happening and when my bleep the the c word and i'm just not like i'm not good right now like i don't have a lot in me right now and so anyways freaking seven minutes of ranting later i sit with my group <laughs> he plays with powerade light caps I don't know where I got that from, but anyways, I get to uni, I see my group, I sit with them, they all look pretty tired, so I'm like, maybe like, it'll be fine. Anyways, the actual workshop activity was like, um, like I said, it required the lecture knowledge, and I didn't have the lecture knowledge, the lecture was on, um, if you really are interested in soil nutrition, um, like pathogens soil pathogens i didn't watch the lecture i'm gonna watch it later you know and the workshop required information from that but i like i i'm a gardener i've grown plants for much of my life so i i know a little bit about you know pathogens or whatever um so i just kind of winged it but anyways um we get the group activity it's to um, design like a, a recommendation if does this matter do you care we go given like a, a a fake person who has like a fake what words am I saying like a situation where if we were like soil management people um, and we were like hired to assess an issue like we diagnose it you know figure out what to do and what our suggestions would be etc we had something like that and we got given a scenario and um, we're talking about plants and stuff because obviously this is a soil science thing so 
soils and plants, the, the things that we are studying. And um, we're talking, sorry, I don't know why my leg is here. Um, we, you know, start talking about our own experiences with plants at home because obviously we're all studying plant biology. We're all plant nerds and we're talking about plants and uh, there's like, you know, specific plants that are really like um, renowned in like um, indoor plants that are like very difficult. And we start talking about those. And I said something about there's a Calathea species, <laughs> no one cares. Calathea species called like a zebra plant or something like that or zebra. I said zebra plant. I, I interchangeably say zebra and zebra. I don't, it doesn't matter, but I say zebra plant and she, and, and this girl in my group goes zebra. It's zebra. Why do you say it like that? Zebra. Australians say zebra. And she just like kept going on about it. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I was just trying to like move on, let's get back to the project kind of thing. Um, I was like, I don't know, like I, I've been told a few times that my accent's a bit weird. I have like my, my grandma's British um, and my pop is Scottish. So like, and I was around them a lot as a kid. So like I've picked up inflections, I guess. That's the only like possible explanation I could think of. Um, and she's like, oh, how do the British say it? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, people always tell me I say certain words weird. Can we move on, essentially? Like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like, I don't care. It's so not important. Like, we don't need to keep talking about it, you know? It was like, kind of like, who cares? Let's just get back to the task at hand. And then she, like, starts tapping away on a computer and she looks up the British pronunciation of zebra zebra on YouTube and played it to me and then she was like I have a friend who's um English I'm gonna message her and ask her how she says zebra zebra I was just like okay like I was really like done with it at that point like I don't understand why it's a, a thing why it's being made out to be like an actual thing anyways we get back to the thing and like probably like an hour or something passes and a friend replies and it's like i just don't care like i don't know like what it is about people who like constantly have to bring up such a small minor thing that has literally no anything it doesn't mean anything it doesn't matter how i pronounce a word like it really doesn't matter I don't understand and I'm like this is a thing that repeatedly happens to me and I don't know if it's just like like a I don't know like I always have people point out things that I say or do weird and I don't get it why and like why keep bringing it up because I'm not engaging in this like back and forth at all like I'm just kind of like clearly giving signs that I don't really like have any like feelings about the situation at all like I don't get it like I really don't understand and it's just like messing with me a little bit you kidding me from the girls I'm in a group with they 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 aim for HDs they're that kind of student whereas like I aim to just do it to the best of my ability because if I stress myself out about being perfect I won't ever fucking finish it so like I just I have reckoned with the way my brain works I've just, you know, like I, I, I realize these things about myself now and like know my limits. And so like, I'm just aiming to do an assignment to the best of my abilities. If I am not good at it, just submit it anyways. Like this is my 
I'm not like a grade person, like I don't aim for grades. I mean, like I'd rather get a credit or above, but like at the end of the day, as long as something passes, that's all, that's like the best outcome. I did a graphic design degree, like I said, and I had to request my transcript uh, a few years ago for like financial reasons or whatever. And I got my transcript back and I had only, I was in that degree for two years. I had only passed like three courses. All the other ones I failed because I just wouldn't submit my coursework. It wasn't because I didn't do good like because when I did submit coursework, so like I did an animation course, I got a HD for it. Um, like I got a really, really high grade for it, like 90 percentile kind of grade. And when I did life drawing, I got uh, a distinction for that as well. Like when I actually did courses I enjoyed and like the submission of assignments was more like what you do in class rather than like taking it home and like doing it at home and having to like manage your time and stuff like I was really bad at that and I was like not good mentally at that point in my life so like anyways I've realized now through lots of therapy and lots of uh, learning things about myself and experiencing the world and whatever I know now that if I go hard on myself and if I'm a perfectionist things won't happen. Um, so I was just having some thoughts that are um, very relevant to the year 2022. So I was just thinking like, remember the show Ugly Betty? Um, kind of fucked up premise when you think about it because I feel like Ugly Betty um, only could exist because of the movie um, The Devil Wears Prada where Anne Hathaway's character in that movie, the whole thing is like, how could she ever work in the fashion industry when she's not fashionable or she doesn't understand fashion? And that was the whole thing of like Anne Hathaway's character slowly becoming a more fashionable person, I guess. Whereas Ugly Betty is ugly Betty or like Betty can't work in the fashion industry because she's ugly. That's, that's like the thing, like how could, how could such an ugly person work in the fashion industry? That's unfathomable, Un, unfathomable, unfathomable, yeah, kind of fucked up. Like, and I uh, like a Latina woman, like <laughs> calling her ugly. Hmm, that seems really loaded in a predominantly white industry, but let's not think about that too much isn't that weird though am i insane 